<laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start this video. Um, I feel like I should scoot back a little bit. I'm too close to the camera. <laughs> um, gonna record a couple of videos here, and I'm not gonna edit them. I just want to talk about my experiences living in the Bay Area and um, why I am considering leaving. <laughs> so there's a few reasons, and um, I just want to talk about them pretty succinctly. So first of all, let me say who I am. My name is Nick. I am a transgender man who lives in the Bay Area and um, I make videos about my life. Usually, you know, it's about travel, it's about food, it's about uh, sports, women's sports particularly. And, uh, but this video is just going to be about my experiences living in the Bay. So let's jump into it. <laughs> I'm right next to a BART line so Bart's going by if you hear any like trains or whatever but um so first the context of where I live so I live in the East Bay right so uh, I'm not gonna say exactly what city but I think you can kind of figure it out I live um on the East Bay side of the San Francisco Bay Area uh I've been here off and on for the past I don't know like 15 plus years I would say like off and on uh, I live in a couple of different places but I always come back to the Bay uh I went to college here too as well and um it's always been a place that I felt comfortable it's uh it's very queer friendly it's a lot of people of color um it used to be affordable to live I wouldn't say it's affordable anymore but yeah I've, I've lived here most of uh, my adult life and um, I met my partner here and yeah it, it seemed like the place that I was going to live for a really long time and it, and it has been that way um over time of course things have changed and um it's gotten to a point where I'm just not happy with uh, the situation uh, here and the dynamics of, of what it's like to live here. So um, let me talk about that. All right, so I'm distracted by um, people. Uh, we're driving around, I'm like in a kind of a busy area and uh, I'm seeing a lot of stuff, so I'm a little bit distracted. So anyway, all right, um, all right, so let's talk about traffic. So why don't I like um, living in the Bay uh, because of the traffic, right? So when I first moved here, traffic was pretty typical for, you know, a busy city, town area, whatever. And, um, you know, it's it's typical during the morning time and the evening time, there's, there's rush hour, but, Traffic has gotten much worse over time, obviously. There's just a lot more cars on the road. The roads aren't bigger. They're the same size as they were 10, 20 years ago, but there's more people here. So there seems to be this just, you know, like we're, it feels like we're on top of each other. And um, there's a lot of congestion almost all times of the day. There's, you know, certain times of the day where it's a little bit uh, chiller, like, you know, I would say from 10 to 1 o'clock, maybe 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's a little bit chiller on the road, but and like 7 p.m. to like 10 or whatever it's chill on the road but then outside of those hours you got you got your congestion you got your commuter traffic you got people wilding out on the road so uh it's just a lot to deal with there's a lot of different types of personalities here um different types of um people and different types of driving style so there's not one driving style here it's just like a lot of different people's way of driving and you kind of have to deal with it uh there's a lot of anger right now um because of the economic situation so you see a lot of that coming out in the way that people drive just a lot of like rushing um cutting people off running red lights um what else you know like you know, just road rage um you know there's been on the freeways you, you might have seen news articles about you know there being sh people getting shot on the freeway and that's very common like road rage is such a big thing here um i've seen some crazy stuff like I remember being on the freeway once and I saw a car full of children and I should not children. It was like, uh, like a nine year old and some other kids in the car driving the car on the freeway, um, erratically. So that was, <laughs> that felt crazy. Um, but that did happen. And, um, you know, I've seen car collisions. I've seen people break into cars. So like smash and grab is a really big thing here in the Bay Area. Um, it's been that way for decades, but it's gotten really bad lately. Um, and people are just breaking into any and everyone's car for any and everything. So people are literally putting their car, their back seats down, like especially Tesla's because Tesla's get hit a lot because of people trying to get in the trunk, the back trunk. So they put their seats down in the front so that you can look in the car and see that there's nothing in it and won't break into the car. 
because that's like a thing i got my car broken into i was in san francisco i went to a concert came out of the concert about 10 30 and someone had broken into my back window um to get into the trunk of my trail uh, the trunk of my car to see if there was anything in it and of course there was nothing in it because i don't leave valuables in my car but that's not the point it's uh it's uh, you know it's a numbers game and um people are doing it all the time and i, and I like i said I've, I've i've seen people break into people's cars multiple times i've seen it maybe three or four times in the act um over the last three years maybe i've seen people break into cars so i mean that tells you a lot that how how often it's happening so that um and uh, yeah like i said congestion it's just like it just seems like we're all on top of each other and it's just very unpleasant rent let's talk about rent so rent is very expensive here as a lot of people know um unless you live in the hood and even if you live in the hood rent is expensive but here in in the bay area at least in the east bay you're looking at for a one bedroom over two thousand dollars at least twenty five hundred you might be able to find something for twenty four um but for a one bedroom absolutely you're gonna looking in the two thousand range uh it's possible to find something cheaper, but like I said, you're going to be living in the hood or you might be living in somewhere that you maybe is like far from public transit or from uh, food and things and businesses. So that's kind of an issue. Um, most people have roommates because it's so expensive to live here. I am very lucky and I live in a rent controlled apartment and I was dumb enough to leave that apartment originally the first time. <laughs> And I came back and it was still affordable and I was like, I'm I'm never leaving this place again. Uh until I leave the country. But um yeah, I, I am lucky enough to live into live in a rent controlled one bedroom apartment. I pay under two thousand dollars and it is a hundred year old dilapidated building with no AC. <laughs> okay. I love my building, my property manager is amazing. I have great um uh I guess apartment mates, <laughs> um people in the building that I live with, you know. Everyone's really great, but you know, I live on the edge of the hood and um, I live across the street from a very busy hospital, a very busy street, you know, but I'm I'm quite close to several buses and I'm right next to two major freeways. So it's, there is, you know, you take the good with the bad, right? But I am lucky to be in a situation where I can't afford to stay here. And I know so many people who could not afford to stay here and um, have been pushed out of the out of the Bay Area. So I, I have to say, you know, I'm lucky that I'm, I'm, I'm able to stay. Um, let's talk about the anger here. So I kind of mentioned that with the driving and the how people... Oh, that's something else I need to talk about. The cars here <laughs> before I get into the anger. So the cars here, a lot of people cannot afford insurance a lot of people can't afford to fix their cars if they do even do have insurance they might just have liability only so you see here lots of cars that are rough cars that are in not great condition either a lot of sun damage um because maybe they're cleaning the cars with incorrect materials lots of scratches lots of dents lots of brakes windows broken in with like plastic cover the cars here are rough looking they're just they're intense so that is like you know when you see blight blight makes things blightful like everything is blightful so um let's talk about well that was i mean that's i had to talk about the car so and then now um let's talk about anger so i mentioned that the anger issue here um and you see that with people driving and acting crazy and things like that um but uh what i've noticed is you know road rage obviously and then there's just like anger in general because it's so expensive to live here. Um, everyone's just surviving. You're not living. You're just surviving. You're just trying to get through. And you see people suffering. And um, you see that coming out in anger with people. So people are not patient. They don't want to wait for things. They get angry at, you know, uh, at customer service representatives or, you know, people in retail. Just a lot of just like no patience a lot of like short fuses and i have to say in particular i see a lot of anger from black women here and i mean i, I, I can imagine why you know black women are the least respected people in the world <laughs> and it's really hard especially when you're a black woman you're a woman you have to take care of a lot of things you're taking care of yourself you're taking care of your family there's a lot of expectations on you and i i see you know just there's not a lot of opportunity here education sucks and you see it come out i've seen a lot of black women here do very unhinged things lots and lots of unhinged things of like property destruction um anger violence i've just seen a lot of stuff and i'm like i i understand it i get it it's sad but it is like that's the reality of the situation is you know all that pressure it's gonna come out it's like 
all of that anger is pain. You know, that's what it is. That's that's the reality. All right, so um, running red lights. I think I already mentioned that people running red lights, shooting on the freeways. The robberies have gone up, obviously. So um, a lot more uh, people, you know, just mostly smash and grab. But yeah, you know, people are getting um, uh, retail stores are getting robbed. So like literally, literally mom and pop stores like donut shops retail places uh clothing stores are being um burglarized by people which is so fucking wild that company these you know people are so brazen and they feel like they can they have they have the right to uh you know criminalize anyone and anything and that's just really disconcerting that people are like you know hitting mom and pops i'm just like if you're gonna do crime and you're gonna steal like do that shit with like uh, corporation, you know, like something that has like insurance and can cover that stuff. When you have a small business, that you know, getting your place broken into multiple times can put you out of business. Like it's not a joke, and and it really affects real real people, and um, that makes me angry. I think that's that's been making me the most angry, is that I'm seeing so many people being affected by the crime here, like just mom and pops and individuals, people's getting their cars broken into. It's just like it's really unsettling and it makes you not want to be here and i see why people want to leave and they're like it's expensive and it's it's there's so much crime and it's dangerous so like why the fuck would i stay you know um the amount of houseless people here so homeless and houselessness is very common uh there is no safety net here i live very close to homeless encampments many different types of homeless encampments and um it's it's unfortunate you see so much sickness you see so much pain you see so much people just struggling and um there's nothing you can really do about it other than walk by it maybe and just deal um just the addiction is, is strong right so there's nothing you can really do but stay clear and like give people their space they're not usually not dangerous people they're just like sick and they're just like struggling uh and that's just hard because it's just everywhere there's lots of fires too a lot of people i've seen fires i've seen like a homeless encampment catch fire and then i've seen them have fires at their places but them get put out so you know it's just it's a hazard it's um it's scary it's all the things um now let's talk about women of the night so oh and i'm looking out i'm in my car right now and i'm looking out right now and i see a person who looks disheveled um probably are homeless they're running around i don't even know what's going on they're just doing something they're doing a lot anywho so uh women of the night or women of the day really uh the sex workers are out all the time like from morning to night and uh you know you know you know who they are because they're literally wearing nothing they're like wearing like some lacy dress with no underwear or what have you and uh it's, it's there seems to be an uptick there used to be like on a certain part of international and foothill and now they are boulevard which is in oakland uh, specifically and then now uh they're kind of everywhere so that is interesting they just keeps growing and growing and there's more of them so i know that there is probably one or two pimps out there who are expanding their business which is very sad because all these these young women are being um you know abused and manipulated and in this work i mean i i believe in sex work i believe it's you know work is work but i believe that it should be done with your consent so like if you're being forced into it and you have no other choices or other options then i don't believe in it so that's usually what people are doing if they're walking the street it's not because they want to or they have other options and uh so that just makes me sad it's sad to see too you're just like looking at that stuff it's just hard um police do nothing here so uh the police departments here are under investigation by the federal government there's a lot of issues um there's the there are police departments that are actually have been connected to the sex uh work industry here so you know the police officers are using the sex workers as well so what are you gonna do when they're part of the crime you know so like they commit a lot of crime themselves so it's just like they're not really reliable and they don't really do anything so and then and a lot of um uh, criminals know that so they just continue to do what they do because they know that there are no consequences you know you see many people doing the most on the road be because there's they're not gonna get in trouble or breaking into places because they're not gonna really get in trouble for it so um people do whatever they want here um and so with all that said I, you know i'm just complaining but it, it gets to you it gets it gets to you a lot and then you're like 
dealing with it and you're seeing it every day and it's really disconcerting and it makes you feel anxious and not comfortable being here and, and you're just like you know you're surviving and I not a fan of that they're not looking to survive but that's kind of what it is here and you become like numb to it you become like oh this is normal this is how things are um and I don't like that I don't like living in a place where I don't feel comfortable and I I end up having to go other places to be comfortable like when I want to feel comfortable I go to Alameda <laughs> I go to this man-made island that's a, that's attached to, to to the East Bay um or I go to um where else do I go I'll go to like Berkeley or or Albany <laughs> you know like I go I go outside of the the main East Bay or you know go all the way to uh Livermore or Pleasanton you know or, or Walnut Creek and Pleasant Hill you know going a little bit further out uh of the East Bay because shit here is just it's just so much it's a lot to deal with and um it's hard um i've been dealing with it for a long time and i'm trying to be positive but you can only deal with something so much and um you know of course you know you could look back on the history and be like well it used to be worse like it, could, it used to be a lot worse you know this isn't even that bad and i'm like that's not a great way to look at things <laughs> this is like well it used to be worse than this so you know this is this isn't even as bad as it used to be so you should be happy you know like no i don't want to have that kind of like existence in my life of like i'm i'm um you know it just feels like i'm just settling i'm like okay well this is the best that i can get <sighs> and the 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 alternative is like okay you could leave but i'm like but i would i would be losing the diversity and i would be losing my rent control so with me leaving i would end up if i left my apartment i would end up paying more in rent no matter where i went no matter even if i went to a cheaper city i'd probably end up paying more because i have rent control here <laughs> so it's kind of like this crazy catch-22 of like stay here in this expensive ass place but you can kind of afford it sort of or move in to a place where you're not going to feel comfortable and then you're definitely going to struggle to afford so it's like mm, i guess i'll be here in a place that i'm comfortable but has become kind of shit <laughs> anywho so that's that's where i'm at that's what i wanted to share is that i've had a very interesting um experience oh my god i'm I'm literally, this woman is walking by right now. She looks rough. She's got a cigarette in her hands. She's got a bag. She doesn't have any shoes on. She has socks on. <sighs> She's got a beat up backpack. She probably just woke up, you know, from her life. Oh, and then there's another person behind her walking who looks also rough and doesn't have any teeth, but is a lady. So I'm assuming she probably does meth. Her face looks a little rough. All right, that's it. I I, I feel like that's uh, uh that's really appropriate to end um to end this because that's this is where I live. All right, I'll see y'all in the next one. Hopefully, it's a more positive video, but I, probably not. I'm probably gonna make a little series of videos of like why, what is what is going on in the bay and why am I leaving? You know, um, we'll see. All right, see you in the next one.